Hi, everyone. Ed Bixby here from the Global Green Burial Alliance with my co-host Gretchen Sletzer, and this is Spotlight Now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Spotlight. Um, today, we have a great interview with uh, Janet Sirotto, who has experienced a green burial, and we can't wait to hear her tell us about it. Um, just a quick bio on Janet. She is a New York City-based journalist, contact content strategist and futurist who specializes in covering lifestyle, wellness, and consumer trend topics for a variety of national titles. A married mother of two, and she's an avid traveler, baker, and advice giver. <laughs> so welcome, Janet. Um, welcome, Janet. Hi, thanks so much for having me here. I just randomly saw an article you had done um, about your green burial experience. It was several months ago now, so I can't remember what um, it, what article it was, but um, that's why I reached out to you because I wanted to hear more about it. And um, if you could share what that was like, who it was, um, and how you felt about it compared to a conventional burial. Great. Sure. Uh, the burial and the article both occurred several years ago now. Um, it was my first experience with green burial, but I had heard about it from my friend Carla, who is the person who was buried in the green burial ground. She had read about green burial long before she ever became sick and became fascinated with the idea which was very much the kind of person she was. I met her when I was in college. Uh, she was a DJ in Boston and I was her intern when I was a freshman in college and we stayed friends for decades. She was the kind of person who was always finding something new and creative and interesting that she was excited about. And she had read years prior to getting sick about green burial. And she just thought it was the most wonderful thing in terms of how simple it was, how it honored past traditions, how gentle it was on the earth. There were so many facets of it that fascinated her. And she would tell all of her friends about it and how excited she was about it. We have I've saved it in my emails, an email thread to maybe half a dozen friends or so talking about her excitement, where the burial ground was, what she wanted her body to be wrapped in. She was living in Boston at the time. And since this is going back several years, the closest green burial ground that she could find was in Maine. So it wasn't right around the corner or anything. Mm -hmm. She. She really delighted in the whole process. She found a really fascinating petrified piece of a tree stump mm -hmm. that she wanted to use since traditional headstones aren't used and had it etched with her name and it would have the dates of her life as well. And that was approved by the green burial ground in Maine that she could use that. So the whole thing was a great artistic, highly individualistic mm -hmm. experience for her but and she for all of us. She completely had a hand in planning everything that she wanted, it sounds like. Yes, and she loved the idea, both spiritually, of being part of nature in that way, of not uh, having the processes and containers that are associated with traditional burial. And she also wanted the ceremony itself to be different and much more personal. And one of the things, you know, she did several years after she began talking about green burial, she unfortunately did have a very rare cancer that's very, very hard to treat. And when she knew that she was terminally ill, one of the things that she said she loved was the idea that people could come and spend time in nature and be close to her. She would be there being part of nature. I think she used the expression feeding a tree. Um, 
being part of the earth and part of the life cycle, that was really important to her as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. So was there a lot of people at uh, that came to the, well, first of all, let's just back up a little bit. Sure. So did she um, use a funeral home or was it a, a home funeral or how, or at home? Like, did she yeah. die at home and stay at home or how did that? Happen? She died. She was in a medical facility, a hospice kind of facility when it was clear she was reaching the end of her life. And from there, I think arrangements were made with the owner of the burial ground in Maine. And it wasn't a big group. There were only maybe a dozen of us there. There was a much bigger celebration of her life in Boston where she had lived for all those decades. But a number of us came driving. One woman arrived from the closest airport via an Uber. You know, people were getting there however they could get there because it was somewhat of a remote location. None of us lived in, in Maine. Yeah. And what I recall about it was we were all standing and there was the hand dug grave. We all gathered. And then maybe it was a funeral director who was involved, asked for some help moving Carla's body from the, I guess was a hearse. And my husband was there and our sons who were kind of high school, college age, both of them. And several people helped move. The body was shrouded on a, a very simple piece of wood, like a board mm -hmm. and brought to the grave. And then they used fabric straps and lowered it into the grave. Mm -hmm. We added some flowers uh, to the grave. Carla's daughter was there and was, of course, you know, it was very challenging time, but she was so moved because it was exactly what her mother had described wanting in its simplicity and its beauty. And Carla had told us all about shopping for the shroud material and everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, people read some some various tributes to Carla and some uh, favorite bits of writing. And uh, one of her dear friends is a musician. He brought his guitar, he played a favorite song or two. So it was really a wonderful ceremony. Was that your first green burial that you'd been to? It's my first and only to date. Oh. Yeah. Can, can I ask you a question? Janet, so uh, if you were to sum it up, let's say maybe in a in a sentence, how did how did this experience maybe uh, change your perception of death and dying and 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 you know the final act of kindness like this? Did it change your you know how you felt about uh, the whole process? That's a great question, and it definitely did because the funerals and burials I had been to before had been very sad and almost a little bit frightening in a way because it everyone was sort of holding their breath during the whole thing as you walked through this very sad occasion and i'd say the thing about the green burial was how natural it was how personal it was and how peaceful it felt yeah i'm getting the feeling of like when you all lowered the body together or did things together it probably felt more, I don't know, communal, you know, just a healing that you were all in it together. Whereas a conventional funeral, it's like you're just attending something and not really participating at all, which we always come back to that participation is so helpful for the, you know, the grief process for yourself and in support of the closer family members too. That's a great point. It was a very direct and unmediated experience. And the fact that you could see the outlines of her body wrapped in the shroud and you sort of really knew it was her and this transition had taken place and was taking place was a really moving and memorable experience rather than the more traditional funerals I had been to where it's a metal box and it feels 
somehow off-putting and cold and sort of like the industrial funeral complex. Of course, that that's perfect for many people. I don't mean to denigrate it, but there was something about this which really expressed Carla's essence. She was very much a searcher and a free spirit and always wanted everything to be a little bit special, a little bit more personal. Yeah. And sound, sounds like. Yeah, and so I ask you. Oh, go ahead, Ed. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gretchen. I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I, as you were speaking, I was thinking about a comment you had made earlier about, you know, your, your teenage or your high school, college bound sons being there. Uh, do you, do you mind sharing how that affected them? Like, did they have anything to say to you concerning experiencing something so maybe so new and different? That's a great question. It was really, really powerful for them. They remember it so clearly. And I have to say it was all of our first green burial and we were a little bit taken aback when, when the funeral director or officiant of whatever sort he was came over and said, can I get some help You know, moving the body? Mm-hmm. I sort of wondered how my sons would react because so many of us are brought up with a lot of separation between us and death, dead bodies can be a very sort of scary experience, but they found it really beautiful and memorable and definitely um, look at it as something to be embraced Mm. versus other kinds of, uh, ceremonies yeah right it's so amazing because it's people celebrate birth so much and having natural births and it's such a celebration and moment in everyone's life but death also is is in my opinion equal to that you know it's equal it's equally profound and equally um equal opportunity to just get real with life, you know, and death and your relationship to the person that you love and seeing them off in a, um, in a way that does no harm, I guess. Definitely. And I think that intention that Carla had about this is how I want the, um, end of life, rites to take place, the ceremony to take place, really gave it so much more thought and made it a creative and um, communal experience, I think was the word that was used before, versus I think a lot of people just avoid the whole topic and then their loved ones sort of have to figure out, oh, what's the standard way of doing things? from the menu of options at a funeral home. And what was so nice about this was to hear Carla's really palpable excitement about it, how beautiful this spot was, how tranquil it was, talking about the shroud. There was some moss green velvet she wanted involved in some way that she found to be, I don't know if it's the right term is biodegradable or what, but to view it as uh, something you can plan for and take that kind of creative spark mm-hmm. when making all those arrangements was really a wonderful experience, I think, for everyone. Yeah. Sarah was her name? Sarah? Carla. Carla. Yeah. And now all these years later, her story is living on to support other people who want this and to support the planet in a healthier, um, healthier way with death. So it's really wonderful. And it's wonderful you were uh, sharing this story, her story with us about this. I, I hope this goes long and far and helps people. Thank you, me too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Janet, what you said a couple times, and I think it's so interesting. You know, we, Gretchen and I deal with this for, you know, on a daily basis. And and you're you're speaking of an experience that you experienced once for a dear friend. And and you, uh, I say all the time, it, you have to experience it to understand it or to truly understand the definition. And you said co- uh, several times, you know, that it was memorable. And 
And that's what I think is so important about this is that you're celebrating a life that was lived and, and you want to create a very fond memory of, you know, of the experience. And, and I think that sounds like that happened for you and your family, that you can fondly look back and remember your friends, you know, in this special way. So we at the Global Green Burial Alliance really appreciate you sharing that. And if you had a final statement for our viewers concerning how this changed your, let's say your life profoundly, uh, will this be something you'll consider for yourself, uh, you know, when the time comes? I might, you know, I had always been sort of raised in that cremation and sprinkle the ashes camp but I might rethink that. And the thing that I would say is, while of course my experience is unique, every person I know who's been to a green burial comes away with similar sentiments saying, uh, it was sort of mind blowing, it was so special, it was so memorable. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it to be such a positive experience. I felt great about it. So it's interesting comparing notes with other people as Green Burial becomes more uh, a more well-known and viable option for more and more people. It's great to see that it resonates on those levels, it seems, with pretty much everyone who experiences one. Yeah, well, yeah, so because absolutely. we need a we need to feel that way when we have to deal with something so hard as loss. So to feel that good about this, you know, the ceremony ritual or the process of sending them off is just nice to hear that you've heard that too. So thank you for that. My pleasure. Thank you so much for letting me share this. Yeah. Thank you, Janet. Well, so anything else you want to add or... Um... Ed, you got any? No, I think I think Janet, you know, really, you you put it well, you know, in words. Again, it's a it's an experience that's within all of us. We don't realize we possess the capability to you know care for our dead in this special way, and and it almost shocks the system. And I think when you uh, you express how you felt and how your family felt, that was the perfect way for our viewers to understand it. Uh, it may be shocking initially, but then you saw all the beauty and in it and you were you know you were actually able to be part of it and feel inspired and good about it so thank you janet it, it was a wonderful uh way for us to enlighten our viewers sure thank you again and if anyone is interested in hearing more the article was published on a website called next avenue about green burial was yeah. you know the keywords <laughs> thanks janet awesome. Thanks, and I Janet. just want to add, too, that I know you experienced this several years ago, but since then, there are so many more green burial cemeteries, hybrid, natural, and conservation, and a lot more funeral directors getting involved with this, too. So it's really exciting to see how much it's been growing, probably since you had your experience, and not just in our country, but um worldwide so it's really exciting times for green burial for everyone for the people who work and the people who um are blessed to uh, have the option so i'm just really happy to be doing this um spotlight with you janet thank you thanks again, thank you again. Janet. thanks okay well that's it for us for our spotlight this week and um, we'll be back next week with a guest. So thank you, everyone. Bye now. Bye.